Previously on All Magnus Batman. <laughs> Hail Disney. I was the end game. Well, thank you, Dr. Strange. I owe you one. Holy Welcome, my fellow vigilantes. I bet you're wondering why uh, you had to see that big giant segment in the beginning of the video. It's because I left a giant plot hole in my last video. I left a video where basically I blew up the entire world. So I had to make sure that everything comes around full circle and don't want to leave you hanging. So I had to complete the part two of that of that ridiculous plot point. <laughs> well, thank you for watching anyway. So then I'm, I'm going to let you guys know this is the segment where I'm going to basically devour and destroy these films once again. Now, I'm not going to have rants anymore. I already did that in those 10 separate videos. These are the top 10 worst films of 2018. Um, I initially call it My Suicide Squad. These movies are so bad that it makes you want to kneel over and die. Without further ado, let's get into number 10. <laughs> Number 10 is Black Manta, and Black Manta sort of reminds me of 15 to 17 to Paris. It's it's a movie that just it just just won't go away because I, I can't completely trash it and I can't completely, you know, appreciate it because its film is based off a true story, based off a thing that happened in real life, and the performances were bad, but that's okay because the actors were inexperienced and these and the real people that was in the movie, they're not real actors. You see where I'm going with this? Um, it's like every flaw I have with this film, I always had to rebuttal it with a positive. But it's in my worst movie of 2018. Vine whipping into number nine is Mile 22, My Poison Ivy. Seriously, this movie was just terribly, just horribly edited. And it just felt like, they, it felt like chimpanzees were in the editing room, not the zoo, that you have a lions, tigers, and bears all in the editing room just doing whatever. You got, you got monkeys throwing feces, you got the DJ playing that song all night. It's, it's on and on and on and on and on. Mark Wahlberg, this is a forgettable performance from Mark Wahlberg, I don't know what he was doing. He can take one subtle movement like me holding this pen, like so, and they edit that and cut it 1,304,000 times in one second. And I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> Again, Winchester was really trash, and I just, this whole entire movie was literally a jump scare, and there's really no point to me talking about it, because I, I just, I sort of forgot what the plot was. It, it tried so hard to be, like, supernatural and insidious, put in one. I think that was the reason why I forgot about it. <laughs> Number seven is Slender Man, and uh, uh, this again going into this movie, uh, uh, whoa, whoa, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. These children are they get killed because they saw a video on the internet. Slender Man will still haunt them, but he will influence them to go to the forest. He can't really kill them if they're if they stay at the house. I just negated this whole entire movie.
Number six is Deathstroke. And I literally had a stroke after watching The Predator. The Predator is literally one of the worst movies or one of the worst attempt movies that's trying to create a franchise I've ever seen since The Mummy. They try to bring up a new franchise by giving us an Iron Man Predator. An Iron... I'm being really serious. In the very ending of this movie, they tried so hard to create... A cinematic universe revolving around an Iron Man Predator. I rest my case. Number five is Deadshot, and that is Nobody's Fool. I was a fool watching this film, and Tyler Perry definitely deserves one of the giant middle fingers and this world has ever seen in his face. And really, Tiffany Hash's character was really ridiculous and really, really irritating. Every time she goes into the room, she gotta be like, Oh yeah, this is nice, yeah, you go girl, oh, what you say, yeah. You sound like a goat that need to be slaughtered. <laughs> Number four is Captain Boomerang, and that has to be Stranger's Prey at Night. Stranger's Prey at Night was a movie I literally want to forget. It tried so hard to copy John Carpenter's style. It tried so hard to bring in 80s music every time there is a killing. There is a, the cow, the characters made dumb decisions. This character had a shotgun. She killed this one person with a shotgun, but when she was getting chased by an axe, she throws her shotgun away. The character's mother, who's being played by Christina Hendricks, she had a phone. She throws the phone even though the phone was fully working and things. And Number three is Holly Quinn and Holly Quinn represents Hellfest. This, this movie was a total hell. Movie made no lick of sense because this whole entire movie takes place at a festival. Like, you know, the equivalent to the haunted, the haunted houses that... Usually that your city would have around every Halloween. And it takes place similar to that setting. And and it just doesn't make sense because the killer is killing these teenagers during that setting where there's like tons of people around. But yet the film tries so hard to make it look like no one sees the killing and no one can see him. But yet he's walking around with knives and weaponry and real syringes and real axes. And this movie does not make lick of sense because it doesn't... It, it doesn't have the logic. You, if you don't have logic, it's dumb. Number two is Unfriended. Unfriended Dark Web. Uh, it, the movie tries so. It just the movie tried so hard to be ambitious, and they flew too close to the sun, and they burned. They didn't fall. They just completely burned to a crisp. And it's really about a dark organization that hunts you. But we, how many times have we seen it before? We seen that before. We seen it in Nerve. It just tried to be too much. I have nothing to say about this film. I mean, y'all y'all already know where I stand. Um, I mean, it's about a, it, this whole entire franchise is about a man. Getting brutally raped in the ass by his mother. Ha <laughs> ha! And he has the addictive sexual desire to do so to women. And Dakota Johnson is weak, is so weak that she allows him to manipulate her and penetrate her ass. And the cycle continues. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm so glad I will never, ever have to talk about these movies ever again. I'm so ready for 2019. It's so ready. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And I thank you for subscribing and supporting me. And we're going to go into 2019 strong. It's hopefully stronger. And continue liking my videos. And continue sharing and telling your friends about my videos. And just help the channel out. And help this channel grow and expand. Without you guys, I am nothing. So thank you for watching. I love you guys. You are the best. And Happy New Year. And I'll see you in 2019. And if you like everything you see and you agree, subscribe to my channel and join me and the Batman family. I have more Batman-tastic reviews in the way. You have been warned. Till then, ciao. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Come on! Yeah. 
Let's have some fun with this. Look. This is.